reporter to no job and sleeping in a bush. She went from living the high life. Growing up, you had a nanny, a maid. To just living high. Have you been drinking today? This morning. She used to tell me to kill myself. Tell you to kill yourself? You've missed a lot of this, haven't you? Get real, lady, because you're a drunk. She's defensive. The truth isn't what Dr. Phil's not getting. I was a really good mom. But here's a news flash. You stole their money, stole their future. You come out here like Miss Goody Two-Shoes. Hell, you even pretentiously kill yourself. I got my Mercedes and went to the vineyard to kill myself. Oh, my God. Get over yourself. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Phil. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Be five, four. I am not giving up on you. can say that they were personally mentored by Diane Sawyer and Connie Chung, or that they got the exclusive interview with one of the key players in a big recent news story, like George Zimmerman's wife from the Trayvon Martin story, or that they bought a million dollar house for cash, like this one. But today's guest isn't like any other in many ways. Because Christy has gone from being a three-time Emmy-winning TV news reporter with a glamorous headshot to a three-time arrested former reporter with a drunken mugshot. She has no job and no contact with her daughters. Here is this one-time reporter's own report about her road to ruin that looks just like the damage from the plane of Flight 261 has been found on the same kind of parts in two more Alaska MD-80s. It's embarrassing, ridiculous, because of my drinking. I've gone from leading national network investigative reporter. We hid two video cameras in our vehicle. To no job and sleeping in a bush. In 2001, paid cash, $1.2 million for an incredible house on the water. Right now I have probably $300 to my name. A lot of my financial problems were because I was out of it on drugs or alcohol. In January 2013, I remember having no car, no money, totally depressed, disconnected from my daughters, and almost having $50 only and didn't want to spend it on a motel. I remember walking behind a fast food restaurant and bushes this high and sleeping under the bush. After my car accident in 2010, I was taking three or four oxycodone a day. I started drinking alcohol to go to bed. When I went into rehab, my daughter Heather turned on me. Heather exaggerated my addiction, smeared my character. I would walk into my mom's room and she'd be passed out on the bed and there would be empty bottles of vodka lining the room. I'm not a drunk, but Right now, including having drank this morning, I drink three nights a week, and I'll drink like up to a bottle of wine to go to sleep. The reason I drink is loneliness, but mostly heartbreak. I know if I had the love of my daughters, I could not drink, but it's because there's such deep love between my daughters and me severed that I drink so much. Well, it's gotten so bad that Christy was recently arrested for attacking a pregnant woman at Christmas time. Last month, I was at a domestic violence shelter. I ended up being arrested. I had to spend 10 days in jail. It started because a woman who said she was pregnant started smashing on the ground Christmas ornaments that I had just hung with two little girls. So I stood by the tree and put my arms back, and she came right at me and thrust it at me. And it was the second time police had come for the same thing. First time, they listened to her story, didn't believe her, believe me, as they should have, but this time I'd been drinking. So I was arrested because when I was asked, have you been drinking? I lied. He smelled my beers. 
suddenly I'm in the handcuffs. Even though I was charged with felony on a pregnant woman, um, that's been dropped. I'm ready to be very honest about what's happened and what alcohol does. I have lived my life honestly and truthfully. It's been the number one thing with my daughters and my job. And that's why I want to do this interview. Okay. Have you been drinking today? This morning. Uh, how much did you drink today? I last night um, ordered a vodka and cranberry at like 10 o'clock and uh -huh. kept it till this morning. And at 4.33, I drank it. Okay, because you were starting to withdraw? Yeah, I have shakes. Then you're drinking a lot. In the last two weeks since this happened, I've, I, drink, I drink now more than I have ever. Okay, and the this happened is what? What's the this? When I was charged falsely and put into jail, I started drinking more. Well, here's the arrest report. This is what they said happened at the women's shelter. Mm -hmm. Victim one said you proceeded to call her a black bitch and got into her face. Witness number two said that you nearly pushed her to the ground and she said she was seven months pregnant. Witness number three said you grabbed witness number one's arm and yanked it very hard. There was a fourth witness that said you began calling the victim a, a racist and karate chopped her arm. Witness number five said you grabbed the victim's arm and yanked it and hit her. So all of these women were saying that you were very violent. Were you out of control at that point? And what they don't have in the report is police did not believe them. But I went and drank a steel reserve and he asked me, have you been drinking? And I went, no. And of course I had. I lied to him. And uh, so the next thing, I'm in handcuffs. Then you were arrested at a Denny's restaurant. And that was earlier. when uh -huh. your daughter, Haley, called the cops on you. Yes. I hadn't heard from my mom in a couple of months. And I got a phone call about 2 a.m. saying that my mom was at the Denny's. I walked in and she was sitting with my two dogs in Denny's. She had a bag of wine and I was like what are you doing and she all of a sudden started saying that like she hates me you're the worst daughter ever I told Denny's to call the cops Haley had me arrested Haley we'd just been evicted from a house I'm sure and I had drank two glasses of wine and Haley walked in and the next thing I know she had called police officers they handcuffed me took me to jail my daughter had me put in jail I made a list of just Lovely. the events that I could see where alcohol has really impacted your life. It's impacted your relationship with Heather. Destroyed it. With Haley. Mm -hmm. Problems with your family, problems at work, loss of work, ruined reputation, wound up sleeping under a bush, sleeping in your car, getting raped in your car, a suicide attempt, you've been arrested at the restaurant, arrested at a restaurant parking lot, arrested at a women's shelter, you're facing criminal charges, you've been evicted over and over again, you've obviously failed in rehab. I didn't want to be there. Well, you showed them. It does seem to have kind of taken over your life. Oh, I get it. Christy hasn't seen her daughters in more than two years. Her oldest daughter, Heather, is here. We're going to find out what she has to say when we come back. My childhood was filled with lies. When my mom was drinking, she would get angry and abusive. She said, everything that's wrong is because of you. About 16, my mom asked me to buy drugs for her. I'm scared to know that I'm going to see my mom and face her with everything that's happened. And later, your mother shows up at the airport, and the driver can't find her for an hour. You know why? Because she's in a bar. And then you come out here like Little Miss Goody Two-Shoes. Get over yourself. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Don't talk to me! My daughter is a nightmare. No, I'm yes, She's 16. Did you break all these dishes? Not that I remember. Spoiled. She's not going to school. It was just too big because you have to walk from building to building. This is your brush. Did you throw it into the wall? And out of control. Would you like to participate in this program? No, not really. What is wrong with you? Tomorrow, 
Then on Monday. Do you believe he killed your sister? Yes. Absolutely no. You'll probably have me murdered after this. Why would I kill you when I love you? And I you do not love me. Monday. Walking. My daughter's Heather, 22 now, and Haley's 20. Throughout their life, single mom. I was soccer mom, football mom, a basketball mom. It was all about being there for them. For two years, Heather has just blown me off. One of the things I'd love to know is why Heather did turn on me. Because I was always there for her, the best mom in the world to her, and how could she? Christy was on TV making good money as a top investigative reporter. And she was raising two girls on her own and says she always tried to be the best mom. But drugs and alcohol got in the way. Christy says she's here today to admit that she's made many mistakes, but her oldest daughter, Heather, says she wrote her mother off a long time ago, and here's why. My mom is a con artist. My mom loves to say that she is extremely honest, but my whole childhood was filled with lies. When I was about 16, I knew my mom had a drinking problem. It's been in the last two weeks um, that I have drank regularly, like three times, four times, actually about four times and more. And when I don't drink, I shake. When my mom was drinking or using, she would get angry and abusive. She said, I hate you. Everything that's wrong in our life is because of you. Starting at the age of 16, my mom asked me to buy drugs for her about five times. There were times where I had to use my own money to buy drugs or to pay bills. I later realized that when I was 16 years old, multiple accounts had been opened in my name for PG&E, electric bills, Comcast, and now my credit is completely ruined. My mom is what I fear the most. I'd rather swim with sharks. I'm pretty scared and shaken to know that I'm going to see my mom after all this time and fully face her with everything that's happened. She's afraid of you. She's afraid of your presence in her life. She's afraid of you physically. She's afraid of your toxicity. I don't agree with some of it, but I'm... No, I'm not saying you agree yeah, with it, but, but I... I understand it, it. You sure. understand the mindset she has. I can't wait to see her. Has. I can't wait to see her. Well, let's stop waiting. Heather, come on out. Tell me what you're thinking and feeling right now as you walk out here and sit down across from your mother for the first time in two years. You see her sitting in front of you. It's honestly just like really crazy to like see you here. There were like times where I, I thought you were dead. I hope you know when I left, it was, it was not at all to hurt you. But she has hurt you. Yeah, very badly. It got to the point of, of you calling her uh, horrific names, right? Stupid bitch, whore, the, the, the word. If you say it hasn't taken over your life, how do you go from that to that? How do you go it from... It has taken over my life. I'm not losing another day and not going to not do that for them. Because she says she's afraid of you. And you know what I'm afraid of? What? I'm afraid you know just enough to be dangerous. Just enough to say, I have to own it. It's my problem. It but you know what? I've been real. doing Look this a her. long, long time. There's no way I'm going to my daughters. Can't even match the music. Can't even rap that is black producing. Now they wanna crack the new shit. They just wanna act that I'm back the new kids. They can't even match the music. They can't even rap that is black producing. They just wanna crack the new shit. They just wanna act that I'm back the new kids. Sorry, big man. Sorry, big man. With your big life and your chick man. Sorry, big man. Sorry, big man. With your big life and your whip man. 
there's no way I'm not. Heather, I haven't talked to her for two years. She won't be in my life another day. I know that. Now, there's a second daughter involved in this family. Christy hasn't seen her in two years either. Take a look. The first time I ever realized that there was a major problem was when we first got evicted and I was 15 years old. I came home from school. Nobody was home. Then I got a knock on the door by a sheriff who said that we were getting evicted. My mom was nowhere to be found and I had no answers. I was then informed by my aunt and my sister that my mom had had a problem this whole time and she was in rehab and I had no idea that there was even a problem. She just left me to fend for myself. When I was young I did really well in school until everything started to change and I wasn't focused on school anymore. I was more focused on where am I sleeping or where is my mom. I had so much potential but because of my mom and everything that happened I lost everything. What do you want to see happen today? My mom just admit everything and me have some closure, I guess. You talk to your mother more than your sister knows, right? Mm -hmm. I just rather avoid, like, judgment. You don't tell me at all, so I just never know. When you talk to her happening. when she's drunk, she turns on you, though, right? If she's drunk, um, she says she hates you and you're a piece of so it's a different mom when she's drunk and when she's not. She used to, like, tell me to kill myself and stuff when she was drunk. Tell you to kill yourself? Yeah, I remember the Safeway parking lot. You were drunk. I was, like, nine years old. You've missed a lot of this, haven't you? Actually, I haven't. What I do know is Haley, and I don't want to jump on my daughter. You used to say the most hurtful things to me when you were drunk. And I'm sure I did, but you're the one who would say, I'm gonna, I hate my life, I'm going to kill myself. If I ever and you would always say, yeah, go do it, because you'd be drunk, because, like, I'm sorry, I don't do well with my mom being drunk at all. You know what I'm waiting for? What? I'm waiting for somebody here to get real. <laughs> um, I'm waiting for somebody here to get real, because I'm telling you, I ain't buying this. Hey, you girls better wake this woman up, because I tell you what, she is living in her head. I think she is condescending. I think she's sitting here thinking she is controlling this whole thing and is going to sit here like, really? I am, oh, I'm just here to just take care of my precious daughters and I got this all under control. And I am not buying a word this woman is saying. Not a word. I'm just telling you. And I help people that really want to be helped and I don't help people that don't. And right now, I ain't leaning into her at all it's time for me to grow up and i mean it and i want to go get help and i, I they wouldn't be here if they didn't believe it I, no, they may believe it but i don't what happened during christie's what is referred to as fake suicide we're going to find out what both of her daughters have to say about that when we come back the police said that they found a car crashed on the side of the road with empty bottles of vodka and a noose in it. I lost it. I couldn't even get off the floor. My mom just killed herself. Did you hire a hitman to kill your daughter? Hell no. Do you believe he killed your sister? Yes. If he was my girl at home, you'd be getting your ass kicked. No, you'll probably have me murdered. Why would I kill you when I love you? You do not sister lived in the woods because you say she wanted you to think she was dead. We can't sleep at night. We can't function. My life right now is working okay. You're paying a guy to choke you to death in the woods. That's not working. She's posting that you killed your own baby. Watch your mouth, okay? Hey, don't talk to me like that. Excuse me? We almost got fired from our job because of what you posted. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Lost. Like father. We caught dog crushing X morning pills in the bathroom. Like daughter. My daughter crushed the candy. Who told you how to do that? Daddy. I would never teach that to a child. Is his wife real? We've never met. You sent her $100,000. For a Nigerian love scam. I know some things about Kelly you don't know. Her parents. They do not exist. X is at war. He says you are keeping his children from him. Fighting each other. He was kicked out after he threw me through the wall. 
off. You pushed me, I pushed you back. You grabbed my throat, and then I grabbed I your throat. I didn't grab your throat. And fighting for custody. You did coke while you were with her? Yes, sir. After the kids were put to bed. Don't talk to me! My daughter is a nightmare. She's 16. Did you rake all these dishes in the house? Not that I remember. Violet. This is your brush. Did you throw it into the wall? And out of control. Would you like to participate in this program? N no, not really. What is wrong with you? It all happens. What if this is a changing day in your life? This February. So when she comes out of rehab and starts drinking, where does she get it? Me on Dr. Phil. You have no idea how much I want to slap you right now. I've had probably 12,000 guests on this show. Uh-huh. 12,000 guests on this show. I can't tell you how many of them say, you know what? You got the most buttoned up organization I have ever seen. We are treated like, they take care of you guys? Yeah. Take good care of you? Yeah, extremely. I thought I was famous. Yeah, you thought all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know what your mother did? Your mother shows up at the airport and the driver can't find her for an hour. You know why? Because she's in a bar. Now, how arrogant and belligerent is that? And then you come out here like Little Miss Goody Two-Shoes. Oh, gee, golly darn, I'm just here because I want help for myself. You blow my driver off at the airport for an hour. You're calling my PA at 3 a.m. in the morning bitching because you've called them three times and they haven't called you back. You're either arrogant and think you're above all of this or you're serious about getting yourself some help Thank you. for a serious Thank disease. You. That's what I am. And well, I ain't seeing it. Why would you drink? Like, I just don't get that. Like, because and I called morning, the producer what? and said, I am scared to death to come. I almost got back on the plane if I could. Uh, I have been honest as I can be. Look what you're saying about me. There's no goody two shoes anything. Well, we know that. I just I don't think you too. do. What am I supposed to do? Scream at them? I'm not going <clears> to <throat> scream at them. I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm just asking you to come off your high horse and get real, lady. There's no high horse. Because you're a drunk. <laughs> you know what? I understand that you lived in mansions and you bought them for millions of dollars and you did this and you did that and that you were a big television personality and all that. You know what? I've been doing this for 35 years, and it all comes down to the same damn thing. A drunk's a drunk, and if you're a drunk, you're a drunk, and you got to own it and stop all the pretentiousness. Hell, you even pretentiously kill yourself. You call your daughter. She answers. You say, hang up. Don't answer when I call back because I need to leave a suicide message. <laughs> Take a look at this tape. One day when I was sleeping, my mom called my phone and I answered and I was still half asleep and she told me to not answer the next time she called because she was going to leave a voicemail. Okay. And I just hung up. I had then woken up with a banging on my door. There were sheriffs and they said, you're getting evicted. So I went to go call my mom. And then I remember that she had left a voicemail on my phone. and. The minute I listened to it, I just like broke down. On the day before we're gonna be evicted again, I got up in the morning, went to a Walgreens, got a bottle of vodka, put it in my trunk, called Haley, left her a voicemail, and said, the sheriff's coming, I cannot bear to tell you, and I'm such a failure and loser, and I'm so sorry, and let her feel like I was gonna go kill myself. She told me, this is the last time that you're gonna hear from me. Like I lost it. I couldn't even get off the floor. My mom just killed herself. I drove in my Mercedes with vodka in the trunk and saw a place in a vineyard that I could get through two steel pillars. Floored it. Both sides of my Mercedes burst in. When I quickly turned around and, and drove up to the hill, a woman saw me and called police. The police said that they found a car crashed on the side of the road with empty bottles of vodka and a noose in it. After the police told us that they found her car and her body was missing and after the suicide goodbyes, I did think that she was dead that night. About four months later, I got a call from an insane asylum in North Carolina. When I realized that my mom had faked the suicide, I told the asylum not to contact me again. 
After the suicide and even up until now, my mom says, I tried to kill myself because of you, Heather. Well, I don't know where the fake thing came because the truth is the only reason I say Mercedes, who cares about the car, is it's Apparently so you do. No, I got in my Mercedes and went so to the strong. vineyard to end my That's life. Oh, Lord, give me a break. That's honestly not what I meant. Mercedes are strong, and I burst them in, the, the walls, but I hear you. Who does that to their daughter? Exactly. Every day, I don't know if you're alive or dead. I'm like, I think, I th I think she is actually dead. Uh, uh, the like past few months. Which because one of you gets up and checks the obituaries? You do it every day? You uh, have checked the obituaries on a regular basis? Her, yeah. Well, the truth is what Dr. Phil's not getting. <laughs> and I was trying to visit her, but I was a really good mom. I don't doubt that at all. I'm not saying, oh, please bless me at all. I'm saying it took something pretty severe to make me get so And are, you, are you still trying to blame that on me? No, it's no. Well, some of this stuff, like that, Heather, I never opened accounts in your name. Comcast and pg &E, please tell me. Are you serious? Absolutely, those. Okay, wait, those but are accounts. But I heard that you thought I opened credit, credit <laughs> no, no, cards. No, 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 that's what I was saying. It's terrible. No, no, are, that's what they're Are accounts any in my name? name? All right. Uh, pg &E was and was taken out. Because remember, I, I called them back. And so said, she's ruined your credit. Oh, ter ruined, oh terrible. I can I've never ruined. buy a car or anything. Because when I was 16 years old, I'm like, I got in debt so much. I can't ever. For accounts you didn't even know would have been open. No. And they say the only way I can do it is if I sue her. And, like, that's, like, the last thing that I'm, like, trying to do is go to court with her. Uh, up next, Heather claims her mother tried to kill her beloved pet dog and then tried to frame her for abuse. Uh, Christy says that couldn't be farther from the truth. I plan to get to the bottom of that. And I have one really big question for Christy. Uh, because she hasn't come even close to addressing this issue since we got here. And it's the number one thing I've been listening for. We'll be right back. When I tried to take my dog, my mom grabbed him by the neck, and he was a puppy, probably about this big. And she slammed his head against the wall and said, if I can't have him... You can't either. When I drink too much, I get on the phone and drunk rant at my daughter, Heather. My mom called me four different times, and they are 20 minutes apart. Every voicemail ends with you, just randomly. I always feel horrible about it the next day. Well, Christy has won awards for TV investigative reporting and landed exclusive interviews, but admits drunk dialing her daughters is not one of her noteworthy accomplishments. Heather says this behavior is, well, she just says it's nothing new. In fact, Heather claims her mother once tried to get Heather arrested by going in the bathroom and punching herself in the face after trying to kill Heather's dog. Take a look. My mom once locked me out and said that I could no longer have my dog, so I called the police. When I tried to take my dog out, she grabbed him by the neck, and he was a puppy, probably about this big, and she slammed his head against the wall and said, if I can't have him, you can't either. I love Titus. No way would I hurt him. The situation with Titus, Heather's dog, happened because the day before, Heather beat the living crud out of Haley, screaming. I had to kick Heather out of the house. The next morning, Heather tried to take Titus, and I grabbed Titus and tried to keep Titus from going with her. And she lost it. And Heather jumped on me, and she's a boxer, and started pounding on me and holding me down. And I, I was actually shocked at how strong she was. She started hitting me and punching me in the face, and she tripped, and I held her down on the ground. I've never hit my mom, slapped her, punched her, anything. She's pounding me. Police were called. Heather took Titus, and I followed a police report. The police witnessed the entire thing and saw that I did not hit her. She then got up, and she left to the bathroom. And when she came back, she had a mark on her face and said that I had punched her and she was pressing charges. The police knew that I had not hit her because her face was untouched when they first saw her and they said, we're not pressing charges. My mom punched herself and tried to get me arrested for it. Okay, 
So, and I don't want to put you in a position, but you were there. And what did happen was, but... Did I ever hit mom ever once? I don't remember. I've never once hit you before. I and held what? you down by the shoulders, and that's it. I made a point not to hit you because I knew you would try and get me arrested. And that's why the police said, no, we're not pressing charges. There's no way she hit you. You tried your hardest to get charges pressed against me and get me put in jail. And they said, no, there's no way, because they knew that I didn't hit you. Okay. Really? What Seriously? do I say to that? It's not true, but what do I say? All I, rem I remember us fighting, and there was a fight over the dog. I, I remember think... that, and I held Titus by his neck. Never would I hurt no, him. No, he was crying his eyes out, and you were holding him by the neck. Okay. Well, I mean... She didn't try and kill him. She was, say she was saying, she was basically threatening that if, if I was going to try and take Titus, she wasn't going to let me, and <laughs> she was hitting him. Hitting his I would head never on the hit wall. Him. I was not letting you take him because I wanted you, you out of the house. You really don't think that you hit his head against the wall? Well, here's the thing. I don't want to get into a thing where you and I are going back. You know what I, my version, I'm telling you the truth. But I've done so much. And I'm sorry, Heather. I never should have done any of it. And I wish so much because I know you guys had incredible lives. Not stuff, but you were headed to such a good future. I and still have a great I, future. Oh, I, I still too, have a great future. But I screwed it up. And I'm at a point now, I know you say that I need you as a mom, but I've had to come to terms with myself and be my own mother and mother myself. I want you to get help because you need help. And then once you get to that place, then I'll consider welcome you, welcoming you back into my life. But I've really closed off. That hardened me. It's going to be really hard to, like, let you back in. Like, really hard. And I'm going to have to see, like, crazy improvement. I'm going to have to see you admit to everything, too. And not blame me, like, one more second for it. I don't care if I was 16, 18, or 22 like I am now. You can't blame me for it at all. I think you're playing these girls. I think you think you're playing me. You have not said, I am sorry that I selfishly manipulated and destroyed your lives. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Don't talk to me! Their teen daughter. You refuse to speak to us like a brat. He's a terror. What is wrong with you? Would you like to participate in this program? No, not really. That's tomorrow. This is the first time anyone said this stuff to her, ever. Said what? What you've said. I don't know. I just think you're just pretty proud of the way you turned out. I think you're just full I'm of yourself. proud? Yeah, I do. I, I think you think you're the smartest person in the room. Despite the I'm fact not. that you get in your own way, I think you just think you're just the smartest person in the room. Why do you I think, think that? I think you are incredibly manipulative. I think you're playing these girls. I think you think you're playing me. I think you think you play everybody and everything. I think you are incredibly narcissistic. I think you are incredibly self-serving. I think you, I mean, you have not one time looked at these girls and sincerely said, I am sorry that I selfishly manipulated and destroyed your lives. I am sorry that I did that. You, you have not said that. You want to argue, you want to argue about where you had your hand around the dog's neck. The fact is that you have stolen their identity. You have stolen their lives. I mean, come on, woman. Are you kidding me? They didn't get to choose their mother. They got you. And what you did is you got to a point in life where you lost it, woman. And so what you did is you fell apart, you stole their identity, you stole their money, you stole their future, you ruined their self-esteem, you destroyed their self-worth, you assassinated their character, and then you went off on your own and began doing it to your own life. And then you come in there and sit there, well, you know, I got my Mercedes and went to the vineyard to kill myself. Like, oh, my God. Woman, get over yourself. Are you kidding me? If you want to get real, you're going to have to get over yourself and recognize 
that you have a disease, and you have a mental illness, and you have an addiction, and you are going to have to embrace that and surrender yourself to that fact. And when you do, you will find that those 14 years with this one and those 12 years with this one, that you did a spectacular job will come and pay you back in spades. I because don't want you to did, that. in the formative years with these girls, raise two delightful young women. They are. They're incredible. And I'm not, I, I mean... Who are a testimony to the fact that you did do some things right and a lot before wrong. you got really stupid and made some really stupid choices. Horrible choices. You, you ask a question. You ask one simple question when this whole thing started. What do I need to do to help my daughters heal? It is a simple question with a complex answer. International girl, what's your name? I have to know. Ain't no one else in your lane. Let's fill this car with gas and go. No hesitation, I'm on it. If that's the way that you want it, that's cool with me. So let's ride. Let's go somewhere that you lie. And I'm gonna tell you A, B, and C what those answers are right after the break. We have a lot of fun here in the studio audience. If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click be in the audience. Or you can call 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445. Okay, you asked the question, what do I need to do to help my daughters heal? The first thing you need to do is stop hurting them, okay? It's real hard to forgive somebody for running over your foot while they're still running over your foot. Understand. You continue to damage these girls when you continue to damage yourself and therefore them. The, let me tell you, I've always said, I don't care what it is, children have a unique ability to figure out how everything in their family and life is their fault. Right. They really do. I don't care what it is, whether they're 4, 5, 6, or 16, when the family has problems, they go back in that room, and at 3 o'clock in the morning, they look at the ceiling and figure out how it's their fault. And these two are no exceptions. But the adults in the room know better. So what do you need to do to help them? The first thing you got to do is stop hurting them. And the only way you can stop hurting them is to go take care of yourself. Now, you could get in your Mercedes and go kill yourself, and that would take you out of their lives, and you could say, well, they'd be better off without me. Then they could spend the rest of their lives with the burden of living with the fact right. that their mother right. killed himself. It's not an option. That would be very selfish, and you could do that, and it would be very dramatic and all, but then they would live with that. Or you can stop intellectualizing and figure out that you're no better than anybody else, and you need to recognize that you've got a problem and it needs to be dealt with. And then and only then, when you can go to them with clear eyes and a clear memory and hit the reset button, then you can start anew. And you know what? Plowing up all the snakes of the past and, you know, who said what when the dog was there and whether you punched yourself in the face in the bathroom to try to get her arrested or not, you know, it really isn't going to matter. Yeah. The past is over. The future hasn't happened yet. The only time is right now. And what you're going to find out about these two young ladies is when you get yourself straight, 
what they care about is moving forward. You'll find that they have the strength to forgive what has happened, and they will work to celebrate your life, and you can celebrate theirs. But to do that, you've got to come present, and you're not. I'm going to tell you what I'm willing to do here. I have contacted the Origins Recovery Center on South Padre Island in Texas. I believe that Hannah's house there, which is a treatment center for women, is the premier dual diagnosis treatment center in, in the country. It's an intensive inpatient treatment program that takes a multidisciplinary approach to getting people healthy. And they're going to start by doing everything from brain scans to hormonal scans to blood wow. work, to everything to find out where you really are, to truly give you a chance to get yourself straight one time in your life. And I don't know how long you're going to be there. It ain't some 30-day snap-your-fingers wonder because they work the criteria until you, honest to God, are a functioning member of society again. And, and at some point, you guys will have to plug into that process down the line. And I am willing to make that a gift to your family, from me Thank to you. your family, with a condition. Okay. You show up when you're supposed to show up, <laughs> and you so much as blink. You play one diva card and your ass will be kicked to the curb before God gets the news. Okay? But you lean into that program and I will throw more resources at you than you even knew existed. Thank you. And we will embrace you and you will come back out, girl, and you will not only get in the game, but you will get in their lives. Fair enough? Okay? All right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Girls, fair enough? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, thanks. We're going to follow this very closely. I want to thank all of my guests today. Special thanks to Origins Recovery Center. We're going to have all their information available on drphil.com. We will see you all next time. So long.